This is how to get started with multiboard using the mini multiboard project. All the parts you're about to see in this video are linked down below. In case you've never heard of the multiboard, it is a free 3D printed storage system that combines the pegboard, honeycomb wall, gridfinity like bins, threads, brackets, and much, much more. Learn all about it over at multiboard.io. Lastly, to be clear, it is free, and the only things that are supporter based, in other words, paid, are things of extra convenience, like early access to parts that are in testing that are eventually going to be free anyway plus a few other perks. So if you do enjoy the multiboard and you want to find out how to support the project, all the links are down below. Right, now let's get on with this mini multiboard. The first thing you've got to keep in mind before you even get printing is make sure that you're following the printing guidelines. They are down below, but in a nutshell, usually it is three wall perimeters with your default infill settings, and that will be it. Everything has been designed for a point four millimeter nozzle at a 0.2 layer height. So if you follow that, you're pretty much sorted. There are a few pieces around multiboard that are a little bit different and they will be clearly said in the descriptions of those pieces. Now, the mini multiboard is what I like to call an off the surface mounting choice because honestly, there are just so many different mounting options out there, but it's completely up to you where it's mounted. It's off the surface because you could technically have that on a wall, underneath your desk, heck, on the ceiling. It is completely up to you there. Now, let's dive straight into the key components that we need to understand. The first one being the tiles, obviously. The tiles, well, there are three different tiles, and you can tell the difference between all of these tiles by the amount of bumps that are on the side. So this here is what is called the core tile. This makes up the majority of the board, and then these here are side tiles. You know they're side tiles because they only have bumps on one side. So so the core has bumps on two sides, side tiles have the bumps just on the sides there, so you can click them like that. And this is a corner tile. Corner tiles, you usually only need one of them because they just go up right at the corner of whatever board that you are creating right there. Now, that there is very much the default size. If you're going to be creating your own custom things, you're going to have to sort of figure it out a little bit. You might need more corner ones, you might need more side ones. It's completely up to your own sort of layout that you will be making. But for most rectangular and square things, you're going to be following this little workflow right here. Now, the connection of these tiles are done with these right here and they are quite fun little connections. These are the off the surface mounts of eight millimeters. They are my recommended way of mounting the multiboard. It gives you a little bit of a gap behind so you can run cables behind it as well as use pegboard accessories. And they are mighty strong. They are also not permanent. So you can completely just remove tiles really quickly. However, to take them off, you are going to need a little tool that you'll be able to find a roundabout place. Okay, now let's actually just put this together. It's pretty simple. I'm going to start this all using the center quad part right here. So a quad connector right here, you grab these two and you just snap them together. Once these are snapped together, you're just going to go, you're going to Put in your core tile in like so, then you'll grab this side tile, we'll go put it here in like so, we'll grab that one and we'll do the same here. Now I usually find this a lot easier if it's just flipped around like this, and then you can just press it down and we'll do the same right here. This is the last one there. And if you're ever struggling to get them in, I would recommend a little rubber mallet. So I'm gonna now go ahead and start connecting all of these around here. Now, the cross connection here is very much intended to push all of these tiles together in the center there. So then you can finish this capping off being whatever method you're wanting. But there is an orientation to these as well as these. These are the double ones, these are the single ones. The orientation is to have them upwards like so. Now, the reason why we have them upwards like this is because this is against the printing um, lines, so they're gonna have as much strength as possible. And they're really quite easy. Wherever we have a nice little join here, we're just gonna whack a double one into there, 
and we're going to do that all the way around. So there's going to be four of these in total. So going all the way around like so, one there, one over on this side. It's much easier this way around. And we have one more right here. Now I'm going to grab these as well, which I'm going to just push in. These are the single ones. They will usually go in all the corner parts. And you might be wondering, oh, wow, there's a lot of holes here. Do I really have to put in that many screws? No, it's completely up to you. I personally, on most of my wall, I just put in one screw in every single quad and then one in all the doubles as well. And obviously the singles only have one. Now, just before I put this one in here, I want to give you a quick little look that inside of this piece here, there is a little square. Now that little square is going to interact with this square here. There's an entire lexicon for the symbols in multiboard. The square to square means they're gonna to meet together because technically these snap togethers can only snap together in one way. If you try and do it the other way, they're just not gonna want to come together. However, the other way around, they are just going to go like this and snap together. Now, if you're finding that connection far too hard, remember that there are different tolerances of these here. These are called the part Bs of the snap connections. So with that said, that is, put that there. This is just double checking. This is the DS for double sided snap part B. Okay, that's how those are. Now, this would hold pretty well already, but if there was any sort of torsion force that pulled out this way, there is a good chance that that's gonna pull it off the mount. So we've got to keep this in there. Now, absolute minimum, I would say you have these, there are push fit connections. If you want, you can also get yourself a very, very short thread and you can use the short thread right on top there just so that keeps the tile on there. Or you can use what I would recommend, which are the face plates right here, the part Bs, double-sided part Bs. And we're gonna start off just by doing it on all of the outside ones. And I'll leave the center one to last, just cause I feel like it. So I'm gonna look here. I've got my little square there. I'll look down in the bottom here, the squares on that side. So I know that if I align those two and push down, that is gonna be in nice and proper and that's that sorted. So let's go and I'll do that to all of the corners now. Just push that in. I'll do the same over on this side. Go here, push that in. And if this is getting pretty tight, again, there's the little rubber mallet. So we'll go over here, grab this one here, push that in. Now we've got the same with the doubles. Now the doubles are quite interesting. It doesn't really matter which way they go because they're sort of rotated around. So you'll just be able to grab it and push it down. What I would say is you have to apply force on both sides at the same time to get them in well. If not, they will go in a little bit crooked. And if they go in crooked, there's a little bit of a chance that you're gonna damage them. So just be aware of that. So. If you want, you can just put it in a little bit, get yourself the mallet, whack them in like so. And we'll do the same with this one up here. Whack that there, grab this one here, push that in there. Now, the action that's happening while we're doing this is actually it's spreading those little mounting brackets so that they hold the board. So this here is the last one. Again, it is pretty hard to be able to not get this in right. Now, what I would say is this one is the toughest one. So you have to go from one side a little bit, then the other side a little bit, and then you can just push it all in nice and firm like so. And that there is honestly the core mini multiboard now made. So you can now sort of basically get this up wherever it is that you're wanting it to get it up. Now, when it comes to larger installations, you're going to need something a little bit like this. This is the installation tool. It is linked down below as well if you want. And this one literally works by going onto the bottom left-hand corner of what you're installing. And that is the center of these holes that you see on these nice little mounts. So just be aware of that. There is also little holes if you're wanting to use the pegboard holes instead, but just letting you know, this is the tool. Now the key, key, key thing is when you're scaling this up, this is really easy to level out onto a wall is just make sure that this here is level. The first bottom left-hand tile is, is so incredibly crucial to make sure your entire 
multi-board is level. And then from there, you're basically every other tile or every tile that you put on, because you're gonna be bigger than four by four most probably, they're gonna be eight by eight or even nine by nine. Make sure you just check the level before you snap and screw everything into place. So now that we've done that, let us just have a little guide through all of the other parts and exactly how they work and why I've got these here with the mini multiboard. So we've got snaps. They are, as you would imagine, they are little snaps. They pretty much just go anywhere. So let's say this here and you just push this in and that's going to snap into place. Now they can be pretty tight, like getting that off is not easy. So what you do is get yourself a middle thread you screw the middle thread in, and then you're able to pull out using a thread. This is one of my favorite features of all this because it's a nice, easy way of getting everything in and out. Now let's get that off. Oh, goodness me. Always the first time that you're working with threads, they, they like to get themselves a little bit of a jam and then they go perfectly fine. And of course, with little threads, those know that they can go off a skew a little bit. So there we have it. Now we also have the push fit shelf, which I'm just gonna show you. This is a push fit shelf right here. This here literally just push fits as a push fit accessory into place like so. And there you have that. Now push fit accessories also come in a variety like this. So we're just gonna add another one right here. And I'm just gonna push fit that hook into there. And that is now solid. We'll also just quickly go over all the threads. So we have this thread, this thread, this thread, and this thread. Technically, these two are large threads from the bottom. They are the same size. Then we have a middle thread and we have the small thread. Now, this one here, this is a multi head thread. So multi-head thread means it can take a larger thread on top of its head, like so. It also means, by the way, this is, this is crazy, it can take a snap directly into that head, or you can just do a push fit accessory straight in there, or if you really want, you can even have another middle thread that goes inside that. I went from this side because it wasn't long enough to go that way. Okay, now we have that there, so big multi-head thread will work directly into the multi-board. We have the big thread with the small, just push fit head. Now the push fit heads, they're the ones that let you use another small middle thread in there. And so both of the heads of these are the same. So this one can go directly onto the multi-board as well. But the middle threads, they can only go into a push fit hole and push fit holes have threads. So this needs to have a snap. So I'll give it a snap right there. And then this thread here will be able to just go right into that one there. Let's just go push you all the way in. And then we have the small threads. Small threads, they work into the small thread holes. Now, of course, all of those have the variety of the T bolts. T bolts are much, much stronger. These can take an incredible amount of weight. And this is exactly the same. They take a little bit of getting used to, to get them to thread in correctly. But once you get more used to it, you've got to sort of move around till you find it gets the right point and then it'll thread in. So there is an orientation. You've got to come at it pretty straight. And of course on camera, it's gonna always show that it's harder, but it, they go in nicely. And then of course, we also have the teeny, teeny tiny T-bolts as well. There we have that. Okay, now quickly, we'll also talk about these. This is my favorite accessory, which is the pegboard clicks. And they click because they go in, you push them and they click into place. And these hold a decent amount of weight. Like I was surprised how much weight I was able to get. I think these held, I wanna say eight kilos before I got a little bit of a snap, well not snapping, but a stress line on mine. Again, whenever I say weights, make sure you do your own testing. Be aware that they are a little bit off the board so that you can have a snap right next to it. And then you're able to just put these right next to a snap. So you can really, you can make full use of your board in every way possible. And now this is just a very, very small little glimpse 
at the multi-grid system because this is just a normal shelf. The normal shelves, push fit shelves, work and fit a normal multi-grid box base, but we also have the actual um, plates and panels. So just be aware of that. We have a little lid just showing you the click system. This clicks right in. So you just, of course, the first time going in, there we go, clicks right in. It has the hole, clicks right out. The trick with all things of the multi-grid is the way that you're wanting to pull them out is not this direction, but an angular direction, because that makes it a lot easier to take things out. All right, and that there, I'm pretty sure, is putting together your first ever little mini multi-board right there. Now, this truly is just the very beginning. There is hundreds of parts planned and already out. In front of me is just 21 parts. So I hope you get an idea just how crazy that really is. Now, if you're looking for inspiration or if you have any questions, I invite you to join the Discord and that is linked down below. And of course, to find all of the other multiboard parts and what they do and all of that, go and check out the parts library and the knowledge hub over at multiboard.io. Thank you for watching and keep making.